Welcome to Unit 7, Video 3, Orbitals. By the end of this video, you should understand what an orbital is in terms of the modern model of the atom. You should know the difference between the principal energy level, represented by the letter N, and the shape of the orbital, or the sublevel, represented by the letter L. You should recognize the shapes of the S and P orbitals, though we'll look at D and F as well. And you should know how many electrons can fit into each sublevel. Let's start by looking at some key points of the modern model of the atom, also called the wave mechanical model or the quantum mechanical model. First, even though we still call them orbitals, it's really important to note that orbits are not circular here. So electrons do not orbit the nucleus. They do, however, exist in areas that we call orbitals. This is really just an unfortunate coincidence of language. We held on to the name but the electrons no longer orbit in a circular orbit like we used to assume. Also according to this model, we can't know the path that an electron will take, so we can't predict where it will be at any given particular time. Instead, orbitals in this model represent areas of probability where an electron is most likely to be found. We can't say for sure exactly where it is, but we can say where it's most likely to be and where it absolutely can't be at a given time. We calculate areas of probability using this very complicated equation called Schrodinger's equation. You, of course, will not be responsible for solving this equation, but this is what it looks like. This equation tells us essentially the three-dimensional space or the three-dimensional area of probability where an electron can exist at a given time. It does not, however, tell us the exact position of the electron or the pathway that the electron is taking, only the area in which it's most likely to be. So in the wave mechanical model then, as we said, orbitals are essentially a probability map for an electron location. The darker color in the map on the right, this one here labeled A, represents a high probability of finding an electron. As the color fades to a more faint red or pink color, you have a less and less likelihood of finding an electron. When you get out towards the outside where there's no longer any pink color, that indicates that there's no likelihood of finding an electron. Since it's kind of annoying to draw orbitals with this shading, we often just draw the shape of the orbital, so this probability map is circular. The shape is determined by the area that contains the electrons 95% of the time. So this circle here represents when the electron is in this particular orbital, 95% of the time it will be within that sphere. Notice these are spheres, not flat circles. They're three-dimensional. So what's the relationship between orbitals and the energy levels we've been talking about? Well, up to this point, we've been looking at principal energy levels, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. These are the rings that we saw in the Bohr model, but recall we now know that electrons don't orbit in rings. It turns out that within each principal energy level, we have a series of sublevels. These sublevels tell us the shape of the orbitals within the principal energy levels. These shapes are represented with the letters S, P, D, and F. Within each sublevel, we have orbitals. These are the actual areas where the electrons can exist. These orbitals can hold up to two electrons each maximum. A good analogy for this is the United States. If someone asks you where you live, you might say you live in the U.S. This would be your principal energy level. But we could subdivide this into sublevels or states. So I might say I live in New York, which is in the United States. New York is my sublevel, and uh, the United States is my principal energy level. Furthermore, I can subdivide New York State into smaller um, areas. I, I might say that I live in New York City, which is just this tiny little blob right down here. I live in New York City, which is in New York State, which is in the United States. Or I live in the city, which is the orbital, which is uh, in the state or the sublevel, which is in the country or the principal energy level. Here we have a representation of the 1s orbital. 
It's called the 1s orbital because it's in the first principal energy level, and it's an orbital that has the shape taken by shapes in the s sublevel. So this is the 1s orbital, or an orbital within the s sublevel in the first principal energy level. We can have a 2s orbital, which would look just like this, but it would be in the second principal energy level, so it would be a little bit bigger of a sphere. Likewise for the third, 3s orbital, the 4s orbital, and so on. So what are the shapes of the orbitals? Well, we've already seen that the s orbitals are spheres. Their size increases as the principal energy level increases. So the 1s Sub, uh, the 1s orbital is smaller than the 2s orbital, which is smaller than the 3s orbital. There is one s orbital in each s sublevel. Each 1s orbital can hold two electrons for a total of two electrons in each sublevel. Here again is the 1s orbital, which can hold a maximum of two electrons and the 2s orbital, which despite being bigger, can also hold a maximum of two electrons. The p orbitals, on the other hand, have three orbitals in each p sublevel. They can hold two electrons each for a total of six p electrons. These are oriented along different axes, as you can see here. So the first p orbital is oriented along the y axis, the second p orbital is oriented along the x-axis, and the third p orbital is oriented along the z-axis. Notice one of these axes is actually meant to be pointing straight out at the computer at you, which we can't do two-dimensionally. So this guy here that looks sort of diagonal is actually meant to be coming straight out. So here we can have two electrons in this orbital, and two electrons in this orbital, and two electrons in this orbital for a total of six electrons. D orbitals have five orbitals in each sublevel. Again, each can hold two electrons for a total of ten electrons in the D sublevel. Here are their shapes. They're quite complicated, so don't worry, um, you don't need to be able to recognize these, just the S and the P. But again, we can put two electrons in this one, two in this one, two in this one, two in this one, and two in this one for a total of ten electrons in a D sublevel. And finally we have F elect or F orbitals. F orbitals uh, have seven orbitals per F sublevel and they can hold two electrons in each for a total of fourteen electrons. Again these shapes are very complicated so you don't need to memorize or recognize these shapes. But again we can put two electrons in here, two 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 in here, and two in here for a total of 14 electrons. That brings us to the end of this, that brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at what an orbital is in terms of the modern model of the atom. Remember, an orbital now is an area of probability where an electron is most likely to be found. Then we looked at the difference between the principal energy level, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on, and the shape of the orbital, or sublevel, s, p, d, or f. Then we looked at the shapes of each. You should be able to recognize s orbitals as being spherical, and p orbitals as being kind of shaped like bunny ears. Finally, we looked at how many orbitals and how many electrons can fit in each sublevel. Recall that in the S sublevel, there's one orbital which can hold two electrons. In the P sublevel, there's three orbitals that can hold six electrons. In the D sublevel, there's five orbitals which can hold ten electrons. And in the F sublevel, there's seven orbitals which can hold fourteen electrons.